So my scientific story starts in an unexpected place, in a dank um, but somewhat lovely basement at Harvard University. Here, in piles and piles of boxes, sat a long-forgotten psychological study originally started in the 1930s that recently my colleagues and I had unearthed. In these boxes were a bunch of psychological tests taken by a large sample of young adults who were um, in romantic relationships at that time. The original study tried to figure out whether or not one's personality was that related to your romantic relationship success. So think of like Match.com or OkCupid, but really like a century prior. That's what that study was trying to do. Lowell Kelly, the originator of that study, had this hunch up into that time that wasn't tested, that your personality could allow you to traverse, either successfully or unsuccessfully, the ups and downs associated with any romantic relationship, ultimately influencing whether or not that is a successful or unsuccessful relationship. Now, using psychological questionnaires that were in those boxes, as well as historical information, we can test that hunch. This graph shows the relationship between the probability that you get divorced across a 40-year time span as a function of your personality trait, neuroticism. Individuals who are high in neuroticism, they tend to worry a lot. Uh, you know, they become a little bit stressed out, maybe if they're giving a talk in front of people. Um, and they're also vigilant, you know, they're always looking for things. People low in neuroticism, uh, they're cool as a cucumber. Right? They tend to not really worry about much things, they're not really that stressed out. And what we find here is, as individuals increase in neuroticism, they're more likely to get divorced across a 40-year period. About two and a half times likely more likely to get divorced than someone low in neuroticism. So what this study shows is that your personality matters for your romantic relationships across a four decade period. But my research, along with a number of other colleagues of mine, also find that your personality matters for much, much more. In an almost crystal ball, fortune telling-esque way, your personality predicts major life events decades down the road. It predicts whether or not you're gonna graduate from college. It predicts the salary that you're making at your job, whether or not you get promoted at your job or fired. It predicts your savings versus spending rate. In addition to romantic relationships, it also influences friend and family relationships. And it even has long-reaching influences into your health, such as influencing the possibility that you have Alzheimer's or that you will encounter a stroke. So your personality has this fortune telling like ability and it's not just a parlor trick, it's not just something that's interesting. I researched this and I want to understand why it influences these outcomes because I think it can provide insights into why people are wealthy, healthy, and happy and hopefully eventually then figuring out how we can increase everybody's wealth, health, and happiness. Now, the ability to fortune tell, sometimes decades down the road, these life events, depends on assessments of your personality. Typically, that's done through self-assessments, or how you see yourself. You've probably encountered a number of personality questionnaires if you've ever been on an online dating site, or maybe you've come across BuzzFeed or ClickHole. These give you fake personality tests, um, but these fake tests are not that far removed from actual personality tests that modern psychologists give. In fact, one well-validated personality questionnaire will tell you who your Star Wars twin is. Um, mine, apparently, is Princess Leia. And, and my condiment that suits my personality is relish. <laughs> now, these questionnaires ask very straightforward and simple questions. Do you see yourself 
as someone who talks a lot, or worries a lot, or has an organized bedroom. It is these things that we can then take and use to fortune tell into the future. And these assessments of your personality do pretty well, as evidenced by the ability of your personality to predict whether or not you're going to get divorced. However, they're not perfect. We all know someone that you know, might be blissfully unaware of certain foibles they may have. You know, they're, they, they don't realize that they may talk too much or that they may be sloppy. And to me, I'm trying to understand and trying to predict whether or not someone's going to be wealthy, healthy, and happy down the road. And if those predictions are flawed, I'm not doing my job as well. So the question that I wanted to address is to figure out, is our crystal ball in trying to predict some outcomes based on your personality, is that cloudy? And if it is cloudy, can we clear it up to have a better prediction, to fortune tell your future just a little bit better? So how would you go ahead and do that? Well, instead of asking yourself, what is your personality like? You can ask your friends and family. Your friends and family know you pretty darn well. And they're actually able to accurately assess you pretty quickly. In fact, you have these skills where if you just meet someone for the first time, 30 seconds into your meeting, you are actually able to accurately assess their personality way better than chance. And the longer that you get to know them, that assessment becomes better and better and better. So your personality can be assessed by your close friends. Now, if I want to see if those assessments can predict outcomes like health, wealth, and well-being, I could do a few things. One, I could have you all go home, find some friends, have them rate your personality. And then we could sit back and wait 20, 30, 40 years until something happens to you. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't want to wait that long. So, luckily for us, in that dank basement, in those boxes of psychological questionnaires, were questionnaires about one's personality filled out by themselves, but also by five close friends. So what we were able to do is take one's personality Again, that was rated way back in the 1930s when individuals were about 20 years old. Take how their friends saw them, and we're going to try to predict, kind of fortune tell into the future, certain outcomes. And we can try to predict whether or not they're going to get divorced by how their friends see them. But my colleagues and I wanted to predict something a little bit more, um, a little bit more important. Okay? The ultimate outcome. We're going to try to predict one's death, when one dies, by ratings of your personality when you were 20 years old, very similar to the age of many individuals here. We're going to see if that crystal ball of prediction up to 80 years later is clear from your friend's perspectives. This is a graph that shows the probability that someone is alive in that sample as a function of one's age. At about 20 years of age, everybody is alive in that sample. But those black dots indicate when someone passed away. We see a number of individuals start passing away in their early 20s. Motorcycle accidents, war, early diseases. And as you go on in time, there's more and more dots. And you can trace those dots to get a probability that you're alive based on some age. In this sample, we see that individuals who are about 78 years old have a 50-50, a coin flip chance of still being alive. Now, what we're going to do is to see if we can predict this survival curve and see if it differs for individuals who have different personalities. 
we're going to look at the personality traits of conscientiousness. Conscientiousness indicates someone who is hardworking, go-getting, they're orderly, they're responsible. They're also able to control their impulses. So if I set a big um, um, thing of ice cream in front of you, you're on a diet, you're not going to have it. And that can be contrasted with individuals low in conscientiousness. Those are the Homer Simpson individuals, the ones that you know, are a little lazy, they're a little bit impulsive, maybe sloth-like. OK, none of, none of you are that. Oh. All right. This is the survival curve for individuals who are high in conscientiousness. These are the ones who are responsible, hardworking, go-getting. What you'll notice here is that that survival curve is pushed over. That for any age, the probability that you're alive will be higher than the average person. And we can contrast that with individuals low in conscientiousness. They have a different survival curve. They are more likely to have perished at a certain age. If we compare individuals that are high in conscientiousness with individuals that are low in conscientiousness, we find that the difference is about seven years. Not trivial at all. So your personality, rated by your friends when you were about 20 years old, predicts up towards of 80 years later how long you're going to live. To me, that is mind-blowing. Now we can ask, is your friends, are your friends, better at rating your personality in the prediction of your mortality compared to yourself? Do you think that you have more insight into that crystal ball, or do your friends have it? Now, while you do have some insight into how long you're going to live via your personality, your friends are better at it. That crystal ball was foggy. Your friends have more insight into who you are, or that at least into who you are for what matters in terms of living a long life. Now, this could happen for a number of different reasons. I think the most interesting reason is that you may do certain behaviors that are indicative of your personality. You may, let's say, eat an entire uh, sleeve of Oreos. Right? You know, it happens. Um, but you, you may say, well, you know, I had a stressful day. I had a stressful day. I deserved that sleeve of Oreos. No big deal. Whereas your friend might see you See so you eat all those Oreos, say that, yeah, you had a stressful day, but dude, that's a lot of Oreos, all right? And they would take that information and meaningly, meaningfully incorporate that into their assessments of your personality. Perhaps a better assessment of your personality. So I'm going to leave you with two thoughts. One is that your personality matters. Up to 80 years later, how you are rated can predict how long you live. And the other is that your friends have insight into who you are, perhaps even more insight than yourself.